It is December 7th, and this is your English instruction for today. Our learning target reads, I can understand the expository speech instructions and begin brainstorming my topic. So on Google Classroom, if you bop down to unit two, the newest thing in there is our expository speech. We are going to be working on this all of this week, and we're going to start presenting on Friday. So hopefully the only online learners of you will be back in school by then from what I've been told. So hopefully we won't have to do any flip grades, any weird recording of speeches. You could still give it in class is the ultimate hope. So for the expository speech, for those of you who've never heard the word expository, it means informative in order to describe, clarify, explain, and or define an object, idea, concept, social institution, or process. So you're gonna be essentially educating us over something during your expository speech. So the speech that you're going to be giving is an expository speech over someone who has made an impact on society. This can be someone who's made a huge impact like Gandhi or Hitler, or it could be someone who's made such a small impact, such as someone in our local community who's done something good to help the positive um, roles in our society or, or a negative role within our smaller society that's communal. So you'll have to brainstorm someone to research and give a speech over. The speech itself must be three minutes, but no longer than six. So that three to six minute window is a pretty long range that you have. You'll be able to use your outline or note cards to read from when you're presenting, but you may not write out your entire speech. You may also use visual aids such as slides, but they must have six or less words per slide if you go that route. So it's optional to use visual aids. Before I dive into the rubric on how you're gonna be scored on this, I'm also gonna go over kind of an outline. So I provided an outline below that we're about to look at that you can use when creating your own outline for this speech. So an outline of a speech is breaking down the main components of your speech into a way that's much easier to see than just a paragraph form itself. When we're writing with a paragraph, we have like adjectives and adverbs and articles and all that kind of filler, and for filler words that help create a full idea. When we're writing a speech, we only need really the bones of everything, so the important stuff, because we don't want to get confused while we're trying to read it out loud. Because the purpose of a speech is to present information, but not just read it off to someone, but to be involved with your audience and to capture their attention. So when you're writing your outline, keep that idea in mind. You want to try to be as small as possible and like straight to the point. So it still has all the main parts, as it says in that paragraph, that an essay does. So it still has an intro, it still has a body and a conclusion. It just does it in a different way. So for example, the only two paragraphs or only two sections of a speech outline that should be written out in full are the introduction and the conclusion. I chose to not write out my introduction in full on this one because I just didn't want to at the time. I had a specific hook that I knew I wanted to do and I didn't feel like I needed to write it out. However, for my conclusion, I always write out my conclusions in full because I want to end on a very specific note and I don't want to get that wrong when I'm presenting. So on your outline or your note cards, those are the only two sections that can be written out in full. The rest of them have to be in outline form. So if we look at the outline itself, it has, it's a speech over dinosaurs. More specifically, my favorite three dinosaurs depending upon what they eat. So I have my favorite herbivore, carnivore, and omnivore listed here. In each of those, I have four key points that I try to talk about with each dinosaur. For example, I do appearance, when the dinosaur lived, the diet that it had, so more specifically on like what it ate and stuff like that, and then also like a story to go with them or a fun fact as well. So the rule that I try to have when I'm writing a speech is think of the rule of three. So if you're doing a topic over, let's say Hitler, like that's what you're giving your speech over. If I was doing that and you're thinking of the rule of three, you want to try to find three key things to talk about Hitler in your speech. So the three main points that you talk about would be those three to go with that. So if it was Hitler, we could talk about um, his impact in on Jews. We could talk about his impact on Germany and then his impact on the rest of the world in that scenario. What I would then do to follow the rule of three is from each of those points, try to find three specific things to talk about about each one. So for example, if we were talking about Hitler and his impact on the Jews, you could talk about how he was trying to get all the Jews together in Germany into um, the camps. You could talk about what happened to Jews in the camps, and then you could talk about what happens to Jews after the camps had been um, shut down and they were starting to release individuals. 
So try to find three key points per point you have to talk about in your speech. And your speech will essentially write itself. Because if you're going to use each point for 20 seconds in your speech, you need three key points. So three key points and then three per point, essentially. That would be about 20 seconds per point. So that would be about three minutes, which would be exactly the requirement of how long your speech needs to be. So that is kind of the outline, how to write that. If you have any questions, let me know. I'd love to answer them on them. Otherwise, the rubric is pretty detailed on what you'll be graded on for this. So I'm scoring you the same way I kind of score on your essays where things are broken into category. The far side on the left is our advanced category. So that's if you're exceeding expectation, essentially. The three is if you're meeting expectation. Two is you're kind of meeting expectation. And then one, you have little or no mastery over the standard that we're trying to attain. So the rubric's pretty straightforward. I'm going to be scoring you on your delivery, your content and organization, your enthusiasm and audience awareness, and then your preparation and planning will be worth twice as many points as the rest. To get the full four in this one, you only have to do two things. The first one is your speech is within the time limits, so three to six minutes, essentially. The other one that you have to hit is your, you are prepared as a student to present that day or present on the day you're expected to. So that means having your note cards or your outline ready and printed off, ready to go, and just being ready to present on the day that you get called on. So if you do that, you immediately, boom, get a free eight points out of the 20 that this assessment will be over. If you have any questions over this, let me know. Otherwise, my hope is that everyone will be at school so we can give our speeches all at school. The couple of you that are online right now for COVID or for distancing and that kind of stuff, from what I've been told, you should all be back, hopefully in school by Friday. So cross my fingers there. Otherwise, if you have any questions, let me know.